In this lecture, we will talk about the properties of the CTFT. I will cover topics on linearity, time shift, and conjugation, and give a few examples. The first property that is very important, which also you've seen a lot in all the transforms, which is linearity, meaning the CTFT of the sum of two signals is the sum of the CTFTs. Or more general, if a weighted sum, if a signal is a weighted sum of two signals, meaning it's alpha xt plus beta yt, then the, f the CTFT of it is alpha times the CTFT of x plus beta times the CTFT of y. The second property is the time shift which says that the CTFT of x of t minus t0, so a, time, a shift by t0, implies a multiplication by e minus j omega t0 in the Fourier domain. So you can think of t0 as a delay. Uh, for example, x of t could be the signal you transmit uh, on an antenna, on a, on a cell tower, and, x, and what you receive is going to be a delayed version of that signal plus some noise. So in the Fourier transform, the delayed signal has in module or in magnitude the same. The magnitude does not change, but what changes is the phase. So there is a phase that is proportional to the to the delay. So it's omega times t zero. Now, if you're interested where this comes from, it, it follows uh, immediately from the from the definition. So the Fourier of uh, x of t minus t0 is equal to the integral of x of t minus t0 e minus j omega t um, dt and then you can just do a, a change of variable so you can take let's take tau equal to t minus t0 the bounds stay the same because it's infinity so it's gonna be x of tau and this means that times e this means that t is equal to um, tau plus t0. So e minus j omega tau plus t0 d tau, because dt is equal to d tau, and this will give you. So here you get this term e minus j omega t0. You can pull it out. Sorry. And then integral minus infinity plus infinity x of tau e minus j omega tau d tau and tau it doesn't matter tau tau or t this variable is a dummy variable so this is again the ctft sorry this is the ctft of x so this is how you prove this let's use this property to find the ctft of the following signal which is e minus 2 t minus 1 u t minus 1 so uh, it starts something like this so this this is t so uh, it's equal to zero at t equal to one. Um, so it starts at one here and it's zero for t less than one. And for t equal to one, you're gonna get one. Uh, and for t going to infinity, so um, uh, it's gonna go to zero. So it's something like this. And now for finding the CTFT, of course, you can do it by just finding the, the uh, applying the formula or the definition. But if you want to apply the delay formula, you can see that x of t is actually a delayed version of some signal, which is y of t. So here, where uh, y of t is equal to e minus 2t ut, right? Uh, which is basically this one. So if I want to use a different color, if I want to use it. So it's a delayed version of this signal. So this is uh, x and this is y of t. And now for y of t, we know, we just found the, uh, this is an exponential, so we know that y of, uh, y of g omega is equal to one, two plus j omega, right? So that's from, um, from the first, uh, from, from the first few lectures. And applying the previous uh, definition or property, this will give me that x of j omega is equal to e minus j omega t0, the delay. The delay is 1, right? Times 1, 2 plus j omega. So this is going to give you e minus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega. So any factor of um, any 
uh, factor in in the uh, in the CTFT of the form e minus j omega times some constant means represent a delay. And the details of the derivations are also explained here in a nice way. Um, so you can see we get again the same result here. And if you want to double check your result, you can just apply the definition directly to the signal and see, and you will check that you'll see that you are going to get the same result. The third property here is how to find the uh, CTFT or the Fourier of the conjugate signal X star T. And uh, the property says that the CTFT of X star T, so it's X star minus J omega. So again, so one may be a uh, mistake, the one may fall into is to just to take the conjugation of the CTFT. But you have to take the conjugation and replace omega by minus omega. You have to do both. And again, so you can, this follows immediately from the, from the formula. Now, if the signal is real, this means that x of t is equal to x star of t, then x of j omega has a conjugate symmetry. So this means that x of j omega is equal to x star of minus j omega, and x of minus j omega is equal to x star of j omega. And again, this follows from this property here because the CTFT of x of t is x of j omega and the CTFT of x star of t is x star of minus j omega and because the signal is real then these two things are equal so you get equality here now what you do is you can do the conjugate one more time you get this one here another property is the differentiation and integration so in the a differentiation in the time domain so d of uh, d of x t by d t in the Fourier domain it becomes a multiplication by j omega and this is going to be helpful when finding the transfer function of an LTI system defined by a differential equation. Also you have a similar property for integration so the integration between minus infinity and t of x of tau d tau uh, is equal to 1 over j omega x of j omega plus some initial condition and this makes sense. If you forget for a little bit for about the initial condition, then this is these two properties are uh, can be uh, somehow derived from each other, or it or you can make sense out of this because integration is the the uh, antiderivative or the inverse operation of a derivative. So uh, if you do the integral of this part, you're gonna get x of t, which means that the uh, the uh, the Fourier transform is going to be 1 over the Fourier of this one, 1 over g omega. So you recover x of g omega. And here you just have to do the, take care of the constant because the integral, uh, again, it's the antiderivative plus some constant. But anyway, I mean, um, I think this property, the property on the integration and on the derivation is, is a, a bit more important and we use it much more than the uh, integration, but in case you use the integration, it's also uh, uh, easy to um, to apply. Here I have a slide that kind of show you the proof of these two properties. Uh, for derivation, it's uh, kind of um, uh, it, it uses a little bit of properties of calculus. Then, when you take the derivative, you can you have to bring the derivative inside the integral. Uh, for the um, uh, for the derivation, it's a little bit more involved. You can find it in the book. But in the end, uh, uh, I think you just uh, yeah, if, if you're curious about the the formula, the derivation, you can check it the details in the book. But uh, you can just uh, keep in mind these properties to use them whenever uh, needed, especially the, the the differentiation property. The last property that we're going to talk about is time and frequency scaling, which says that if you scale a uh, a signal with a uh, non-zero real number a t, so if, for example, if you multiply by two here, um, in this case here, so so if suppose your signal is the x of t, the box signal that we did it in the example. So if I do, if I, x of 2t is actually shrinking or squishing the signal by a factor of 2. So you get this one, the third line here. But then what the property says is that you expand. So if you squeeze in the time domain, you're expanding in the 
uh, in the frequency domain, but also but you're scaling down a little bit. So the the x axis is expanding, so it's dilating, but the amplitude is reduced by one over a. So here you um, uh, you scale by a factor of two here, so you squish everything, but here you expand. So this, if you remember, this was a signal of the form of sine something over something, right? And here, because you squeeze it here, so you expand it here and the other way around. So if you expand on the time domain, so this is x of t by two, so you're going to squeeze in the time domain by a factor of two, but also reduce the amplitude uh, of every so well here you have to uh, because you reduce by uh, by one half so you have to multiply by a factor of two because it's gonna be one over one half so I think the the main message here to to know is that um, what happens in the time domain in terms of scaling the inverse is gonna happen in the uh, in the frequency domain if you scale by a factor of a you're gonna scale there by a factor of one over a and don't forget this this uh, uh, scaling factor that outside.